Hey car fans, this is the first week I've focused solely on body work. Well, mostly. <laughs> In addition to sanding, my 911 gets a gift this week. I'm going to show that to you. And I'm also going to show you some details, like kind of nagging details about like how to make the jack spur look better on a hot rod like this. And also what to do with those little torsion bar hole covers. A couple things like that, but a lot of sanding. Yay! Garage time. Okay, I've just been shaping this... Um, torsion bar cover thing and uh, I got it to fit the car pretty well as you know these flares are from an SC uh, modified to the RS profile but uh, the shape is just a little different than the stock narrow body torsion hole covers so I'm just trying to get a good a good flow across the body here as I put the filler here I'm trying to get it to flow over the torsion hole cover the only thing with this is uh, these came uh, with my car in a box and there's a, there's a screw on the back side of this which has been sheared off. In fact, I have two of these and they're both sheared off. Okay, I'm back from the store uh, with the hardware for my little torsion bar cover. So now I have a longer screw on here. I can attach um, this using a nut and the, there's a little bar that spreads across the back. So I just TIG welded it real quick uh, tax there, just like the factory did with the countersunk screw. So that's gonna do uh, wonders to keep it in place while I block sand across it. Here it is on the car. This is gonna need some epoxy primer on it before I can put more filler over it. But uh, you know, right now it's basically holding itself in place. I do have the gasket for it, which I'm gonna be putting in the old gasket or something that's about the same thickness. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, this is the gasket that came off there and it's, uh, it's actually, you know, it's torn and cracked and broken, but it's really thin um, in the area between the body and the torsion bar cover. And then it has this kind of, you know, it's got blue paint on it, but it's got this, this perimeter profile that sort of takes up a little bit of the gap. So this is helpful. I'm going to, try to put this back in or at least put in something of the same thickness so I know what the elevation should be as I sand across this thing. Not too worried about this edge profile, but I do need to order one of these and, and get it here uh, pretty soon before I get too close to paint. I think that looks infinitely better than uh, the jack spur sticking out. So I tried to sort of follow the same angle as the door and um, you know, I like it shorter like that. Stock is boring. So this should cheer me up. This is a box that I got from uh, Mark Shepard. He lives in England and was kind enough to send me, I think he sent me the uh, fender gaskets. So I'm gonna open it up. I think these are uh, for the windshield or windscreen, like they like to say. So these, I I I think are to, for handles to hold on to the windshield. That's really cool. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, yeah. Like the, put, when you're putting the windshield in and holding it, I think that's cool. So there's three of these, um, or to scale a building or something. I don't know. That's, that's awesome. I don't think they're dent pullers. I think they're for, uh, for glass. So that's, that's cool. And then this is, yeah, these are the seals. Um, genuine, uh, Porsche parts. Yeah. He, he's working on a 993 and these, um, say 993 on them. Um, but like he said, they should be the same. Um, and I have a set too. It'll be interesting to see what the differences are. So these have like a, a fuzzy 
uh, material on it and also some little seals to help prevent water from dripping down. Mine are a little bit more basic, but um, this is really important because I'll probably destroy uh, a set of seals just doing sanding and filling. Also, there's another little thing. He said there was gonna be a surprise. This looks like a, a horn button. Oh wow, this is, yeah, this is really nice. So this is a, um, like a leather embossed Porsche button for, um, for the Momo steering wheel. You must have seen my uh, Momo adapter. So yeah, I do have a Momo steering wheel. Actually, I got two steering wheels. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go run up and, and grab those real quick and, and check it out. Thank you, Mark, this is awesome. Really appreciate your support. I'm gonna go get the wheels. What, you don't keep your car parts in your closet? There's a close up of the horn button. Super cool. Um, really looks nice. I had a horn button for this, but it was like a, a really cheesy Taiwanese kind of Porsche emblem. So this is uh, much, much nicer. So it really looks cool. So here's one, this is the Momo wheel that I have. You know, it's not exactly a period correct wheel and it's, it's kind of on the smaller side. It's uh, three, I think 350 millimeters. But um, yeah, so that's an option. This will bolt right on my car. I have the adapters and stuff. And then I also have this wheel, which is bigger. Um, I think this is 380 millimeters and it has a much bigger center cap, center thing. And I don't have any horn button for this. So what I could do is make a um, you know, machine and adapter here that would even allow this to work. So either wheel I, I use, I would love to use this horn button. Really cool, thank you, Mark. Okay, here's a look at the seals. This is the uh, the new one Mark sent me, and then these are some older ones I've had in laying in a box for a long time. So these are labeled as yeah 911, uh, you know 503. But these are um, quite a bit different. So you can see the heights are are quite a bit different. And then also, if you look at the the width of the bead, is a little different too. And then the thickness, the portion that goes between, which is what's important for me at the moment, um, this is really pretty thin. And then this one is, is much thicker. I mean, part of it is due to it's fuzzy, but it also has these little ribs on it. So this, these are good options. Actually, having different seals available are really helpful. So if, if you are trying to fit your panels and you need something to push it out a little bit, I would definitely recommend this seal. You know, thanks again, Mark. It's good to have options and um, I'll probably destroy at least one set. Or what I might do is just measure this thickness and just put something in there that's the same thickness. So this is really good timing because I am going through and doing all the blocking on this car um, right here. You know, these go in, in between here. Yeah, it starts to get tight right here. There's a bolt in here I'd have to loosen up to clamp this in. But this is what this is doing, just like that. And you can see how it, how it fits these, it bridges these two pieces together. This is gonna push, this is gonna change this gap right here. And it's also going to you know, move the fender just over just a tiny bit. So before I do all the block sanding and filling across here, it's really important to have the seal in place. That's what Mark was, was saying. And I think that's why he sent me the seals and I totally agree. Okay, this is the older seal and its thickness is one millimeter. Um, one millimeter in the portion that goes between the fender and the body. And then the upper bead is 4.3. And the ones for the 993 that Mark sent have a thickness, well, it's a various thickness, but the thinnest portion is, is 1.3. But when you include these these little ribs on here, I mean, they do compress. I'm just compressing them with my caliper. It's 2.7, um, which is, is quite a bit thicker. And then the top bead is 6.3. So it's just overall, it's a better seal. I mean, by design, it's better, but it's just, it's a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger. So I did find some uh, material laying around. I found this, this is some um, heavy duty shrink tube, shrink sleeve tube, and it measures 1.1 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do for the purpose of getting the body work done, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this 
I mean, this is, this is pretty heavy duty stuff. I'm not even sure why I have this. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this in between the body and the fender to get the positioning right. So I don't destroy my, um, well, semi-good seals during the sanding. Okay, hopefully you can see that there is a little piece of rubber in between there now. You know, I feel better about it. The gaps haven't changed too much. If I need to increase the gap, um, I can always uh, remove lead all the way, there's lead all the way about to here. Mm -hmm. 